Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use sidebars in Avada. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Okay, let's begin. Basically, a sidebar is a column placed to the left or right of a web page's primary content area, commonly used to display various types of supplementary information for users. The classic example of sidebars in WordPress is on a blog post, with sidebar content displaying associated info such as blog categories, a tag cloud, recent posts, social media links, and more. With the rise of mobile devices, we have seen an overall trend away from sidebars on blogs, but sidebars still play a role in modern web design. And it's not just on blogs that we see them. Another example is a side header. Avada pre-built like Cafe, Resume, and Portfolio all have side headers, which is fundamentally a sidebar holding the menu and any other header content. And then there are off canvases. A sliding bar off canvas is essentially an overlaid sidebar which is not part of the page content. You can see plenty of examples of these on the Avada pre builts as well, including factory, campaign, investment and more. With the classic example of a blog post sidebar, this used to be done with widget areas and widgets and assigning sidebars in the global options. This method is now well and truly legacy. Instead, we now have sticky columns. Combined with a layout, these are the perfect replacement for blog posts or page sidebars and the legacy method. I'm on a single post on the Avada campaign pre-built here, and if we mouse over Edit Live, we can see that the content here is coming through the various layout sections. There is the global header and footer, and both a page title bar and content layout section. So let's edit the content layout section and see how easy it is to add a sidebar back into the blog post layout using a sticky column. As we can see in the navigator, there are actually four containers in this layout section, a featured image banner at the top, a post content section, a post comment section, and a related post section. Let's just add a sidebar into the content section. And so I'll just resize this column holding the content element here and make it a three quarter column. And then I'll add a one quarter column here next to it. I might also just adjust the column spacing a bit here. Okay, so now I'll just edit that new column and head to the Extras tab, and here we can make it sticky with the Position Sticky option. As the description says, we can turn this on to have the column stick inside the parent container on scroll. As it also notes, this feature depends on browser-native sticky positioning. You can also use the Responsive Position Sticky option below this to determine on what screen sizes the column will be sticky on. On small screens with the default column resizing, both of these columns will be full width, and with this column at the bottom, it won't be sticky anyway. But if it's on the top, or you override the small screen size defaults, this option will come very much in handy. There's also a sticky column offset option here as well. This controls how far the top of the column is offset from the top of the viewport when sticky. On this pre-built, there is a sticky header as well, which is about 90 pixels high. So here I might offset the top of this column by 150 pixels to give it some breathing space. Okay, so now we just have to add some content. That's going to be different for everyone, so just give me a sec and I'll come back once that's done. Alright, so I've added my content into the sticky column slash sidebar, and I have saved the layout. So let's just go back to the post and refresh this. And there's our sidebar. As I scroll, you can see it reaches the offset and then becomes sticky. And as I get past the content container, it lets go and we scroll through the remaining content to the footer. Now this approach can also be taken with pages in case you want to add a sidebar to your pages. The approach is the same. To demonstrate, let's add a sidebar to this single page. I'll just head to Layouts and create a layout page called Page Sidebar. And in the conditions, I'll assign this layout to my single page. You could of course also assign the layout to all pages or any post type or combination of layout conditions, adding the sidebar wherever you want. But here a single page will do. So now I will create a content layout section and edit it. Okay, so here I'll create a three quarter, one quarter container column combo. And in the three quarter column, I will add the content element. And with the one quarter column, I'll make it sticky, turn sticky off for mobile, and again, add a 150 pixel offset. I'll just create my sidebar content, 
like so. And now we can save our layout. And so now if I return to the single page and refresh, we have a single page with a sidebar. How cool is that? Now before I go, let's just go over a couple of golden rules for sticky columns. They are mostly just common sense. For a start, sticky column content must be shorter than the other column content, otherwise it won't get a chance to be sticky. Also, the parent container must not be set to stretch, as if the columns are always the same size, again the column can't go sticky. Ok, that's a look at sidebars in Avada. Of course, you can also use sticky columns directly in your page content in different ways, so check out the how to use sticky columns in Avada video for more examples of this awesome feature. Ok, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.